lot of business strategy stuff is some of it's common sense, but what we're trying to do is give you the skills and the tools and the roadmap, pun intended, to really help you make that next difference. But one of the challenges when you're looking at personal development or how you grow a company, and again, these are the same thing, you have to identify what strengths and weaknesses that you have and then build around it. But one of the fundamental problems that I believe exists is that how do you know what skills to add? How do you know what skills you need? Where do you find the information? How do you understand that the information that, you're, that you receive is correct? How do you apply it? How do these different techniques? So for instance, you know, in the past you have guys come on and talk about marketing, you have people teach you about sales, but nobody ever teaches you how one improves the other and how you can use, if you improve your personal brand, that'll improve through your marketing, your sales conversion rates and all these kind of things. This also applies for your career. So that when you start your career, you're technically a good engineer and you know how to do a CFD or any technical skill set. But actually nobody teaches you how to manage a team. You have to learn that over time, how to sell to people, uh, what is business strategy, how does it work? And there was no structured way to give you the path to actually develop this through. So it was one of the things that I wanted to really kind of talk about. And it's just the, the whole Scrabble paradox is that for people's career and personal development, you don't know what you don't know. You try and look for books which are interesting, but one of the big issues with a book is also that traditional kind of business books, you can go to Waterstones or order it on Amazon, but the issue is it's one way. So it assumes that the reader actually understands what it says, that they have the time to read it, that the, that the author has made it relevant to the audience, and actually th th it's one way, there's no way to ask questions. So one of the things I wanted to do when I created the Roadmap MBA was to solve a lot of these issues that for one, you can actually help people walk through the journey, what's required to grow SMEs. And again, the reason why I pick SMEs almost as a niche, one of the issues you have in really big companies, so in a Google, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Rolls-Royce, whoever, companies that are that big can actually have people that are just a 10 out of 10 specialist in marketing or strategy or sales, and they've got 40,000 people worldwide. So actually what you have is teams of specialists that all actually do their own role and they do it very well. That's fine for traditional education, but in SMEs, as Cheryl pointed out before, she has one background, but she's also asked to do HR, she's asked to manage people, she's asked to sell to people, and people in smaller companies are asked to wear multiple hats just to survive and do what they do. But nobody's ever taught people how to do and what hats to wear and how to do it. When you look at everyone's skill set, you have person one, Person two. So when you have two different people in a business, one of the things that often happens is that if you're a, a technical person that has founded an, a, a robotics control company that's very niche or gaskets or whichever, you might have A, B, C, D, certain skills which you have and need which help you develop the product. But there's certain things that you might not have, which is to the creativity and the branding and the, you know, lots of other things. But then likewise, person two, who might be from more of a creative marketing background, might actually have X, Y, Z, et cetera. And what we're trying to do with the roadmap is actually give people the ability to learn what other skill sets are out there, rank where they see they fit, and actually just add it into their skill set based on what they feel they need. So this is something I'm going to work on. But what's also interesting from a business point of view is that you have a lot of founders, so people that actually kind of run their companies, that to be honest, as you progress through your career, go back to the same colors. If you're the founder of a company, you've probably got a very good broad skill set where actually you're kind of good across the board. But one of the challenges is that when you're looking to grow an organization and you, you know, so you might be, we've got a lot of engineers on the board and on the call. You might be very technically good, but you struggle with your marketing creative. So what you then do is bring in someone new to plug your gaps. And it could be a Lucy who's maybe slightly, you know, earlier in her career that she would bring X, Y, Z 
into the team so that the business improves. But then actually, if you're the MD, how do you teach Lucy the other skills that she needs to know and how do you bring this together? And that was just where I thought that the, the Scrabble analogy is quite good because we're all asked to get the highest score we can with the tiles we've got. But the truth is through personal development, a few, you know, through a few different things, you can add new skill sets and really work on a few different things to help you improve. And actually that is as true in business as it is for a person as well. And it was just that kind of idea that I wanted to talk about today. For business growth, now that we've kind of set the scene, what is it? And then crucially, how do you know you're doing the right thing? One of the things where I think most people go wrong is you start here and then they say through sales and marketing, how can we increase your reach? How can we sell to more customers? How can we convert more sales? How do we prospect, etc.? And again, we cover that in the roadmap, but the one crucial thing that it gets wrong is nobody actually ever asks, how do you know you're doing the right thing? Because likewise, so you're gonna have, so yeah, you can do your sales and marketing to do more of the same, but the crucial thing to really look at, which makes the biggest difference to what you then apply is the strategy bit. So what we're gonna look at is, in this context, it's classed as brand positioning. And what this means, it's how you compare yourself to your competitors. And we're gonna do a little exercise, but it's really important to do this, and I'll explain why, because if you can get this right and some of the other stuff we're gonna look at in the rest of the kind of session, this is part of the thing which makes the real difference. You're trying to find the benefits of what your niche is and that's part of what we then communicate and tell the world when you're looking at your differentiation is that a major part of what you find out is different is what your client's buying driver is. So I'm gonna jump back to that. Cheryl, just out of interest, why do people buy stuff from you as opposed to anyone else? So relating to this, but you all get the idea that even for FW Capital or for me, you can plot out why and how you're different to competitors and actually once you understand it, a prime example with, where's the book gone? There. So traditional business education books and courses, they're cheaper um, and there's other benefits to it that it's portable. Obviously I have the roadmap as well, but the weakness, if I was to position it, there's no interactivity, you can't ask questions, there's no videos. Um, some, sometimes a lot of business books, they say stuff in 200 pages that you could say in two but this is where your strategy and your execution is really important. That when you know what the buying drivers are for your customer, which is what we're gonna to touch on now, it's then how you get that right, which is all about the business strategy thing. So what we're gonna do is look at building customer profiles. You don't have to read this, you'll get it in the, yeah, yeah. but what we're gonna look at, and if, if again, everyone can get their piece of paper. Actually, I'll just do it on here. If you were to profile your customer or your, your, your target people you want to approach for your business, what are their pain points? What are they struggling with at the moment? But one of the big things that you're looking at in a business strategy point of view, that's a decision that we can make which allows our ability to grow and do well but it's not a sales trick, it's not a marketing trick, and it's these kind of things to really understand the customer, what their actual pain points are, and that can give you a competitive advantage.